welcome to the Disneyville podcast, where we always remember to hit the record button. <laughs> if you recall last time, we did not. And the worst part about us forgetting to hit the record button for on our microphones, that is, is that we were doing so many like things with the mic, like whispering into it and being silly. And I'm like, of course, that it's... was the one time we did that kind of thing. And it the mics were not on. Like, Secret spots. And it was all... <laughs> All for not. <laughs> You're also getting me as I'm getting over a cold, so I've just got a little bit deeper of a voice. So Ooh, I like it. I know some of you guys might be into it, so here we are. <laughs> so today is episode five, and what are we talking about today, Tyler? We are That's jumping so coasts because we asked, "What are we gonna? What would you guys like to do next?" And resoundingly, we had two things, and one of the two things was to jump to California. So we are going to Disneyland in California today. Now, if you're listening to this, and I need to share a little preface here. Before I'd ever been to Disneyland, which was 2000, oh my gosh, when? 17. Yes. The first time I yep. went. Yep. Before I'd ever gone, I I was big on Disney World, so I listened to podcasts about that. And anytime a podcaster would do an episode about Disneyland, I would skip it and be like, because I'd never been. So if you're listening to this and you're feeling the same way, I got you. And I'm going to share a lot of things that I think will still be interesting to you, even if you've never been, because that's kind of, that was my lens for a long time. And I cannot wait to share these things with you guys. Yeah. I, this has been, I, I didn't expect to be so excited about this episode. Yeah, I would agree. I was, when we first started talking about it, because we are obviously Disney world people in Florida, we go probably way, too much. Way more. Yeah, but yeah. we, uh, when, when it came to actually doing, you know, California, we've only been a couple times. And so it was a little bit more daunting, but actually after looking through it, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is really fun. I'm quite looking forward to today's list because I feel like it's I know so it better than I think I do. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. Me too. I can't wait to see what you put on your list because yeah. Ooh. So this is going to be juicy. Um, and we also want to mention that obviously there's a lot of overlap between Disney World and Disneyland. And so as we yeah. were creating our list, we had to like take a moment and be like, okay, wait a minute. You know, there are rides like Rise. Let's use Rise of the Resistance as an example. I'm assuming you didn't put that on your list, even though that was like number one. It was very high on our list in Disney World. That would still just ring true for Disneyland, but we didn't just want to talk about the same things we've already talked about in recent episodes in depth. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll kind of share what those are at the end of this because I'm not sure what you did include on yours versus not. So yeah. we'll do that at the end of our top 10. But just yeah. wanted to mention that. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, because there's so much overlap between the Magic Kingdom in Florida and Disneyland in mm -hmm. California. Wait, did I say Magic Kingdom in Florida? Disneyland in California. I'm losing my mind already. Um, you said it perfectly, but okay. that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we, uh, like, so Pirates of the Caribbean, Jungle Cruise, Small World, like, all these things exist. And a lot of them we already talked about in our Magic Kingdom episodes. So just keeping that in mind that there are a lot of really good things that we're not going to talk about. So, like, if you're using this as a guide for what to do in Disneyland, just know that it's... Our favorites, sans some of our favorites. But we'll, we'll mention those at the end. So if you're making a list, you can just add them too. Also, mug check. Mug shot. What you got? So I have my Disneyland. Can you see it there? My Disneyland resort mug. And it's got Mickey on it. It's got the happiest place on earth, established 1955. And it's got a bunch of like Mickey ears and all kinds of stuff. The Disneyland D. Very cool. I love this mug. Did We got this last time? Two times ago? I think it was two times ago. It was yeah, a while it's ago. It's a great mug. It is really cute. I Okay, we have like one of those Starbucks Disneyland Park mugs that I think your cousin sent to us mm -hmm. years ago. Before I think it was even before we'd ever it been. It was, yeah. Um, I could not find it in our little mug collection, but I did but the find... the You Are There series mugs. Yeah, from <laughs> Starbucks. I did find my Alice in Wonderland one that says Curiouser and Curiouser, and I think they still sell this one in the parks. Um, and you will see why I have my Alice one here momentarily, but that's Ooh, the one I'm using. Thank you, Freddie, foreshadowing. <laughs> um, so two quick things I just wanted to mention. As far as Disneyland books go, there's two that I really like, and I'm going to do a quick mention here. One is Disney's Land, which I've already talked about. I think it's by Richard Snow. Really great book about Disneyland history, if that's something you're into. And the other one is the Disneyland Story by Sam Greenway or Greenaway, something like that. Um, both are really, really good. Both go really in depth on the history of Disneyland. So if those are it's something the that best you're, part. yeah. And I think I like Disney's Land better because it does more of a an overview on Walt's life and over. Like I think it's a more all encompassing book, but more in the nitty gritty details. I think is um, the Disneyland story. So if you're interested in Disneyland history, so if you read one, what would you recommend? The, uh, Disney's Land. It's very confusing because it's all the same words. I know. Okay. <laughs> Disney's Land. Yes, by Richard Snow. Okay, so. 
top 10 baby i <laughs> we our whole podcast is just just listing things we we're, did i know we said this last time but we're we promise we're not just gonna be ranking things in every episode we have a lot of plans okay we say that every time no, we are but just we don't want to pigeonhole ourselves into just being list but this did feel like the best way to kind of start yeah. all of this yeah. and then we'll okay all right we are the audio know. version of listicles we're basically the audio buzz we're buzz <laughs> Disney feed. Buzz Disney. I couldn't tell you the last time I looked at a BuzzFeed article. Oh, I probably did last night. Really? <laughs> I was thinking, I'm a sucker for listicles still. 10 yeah. years strong. All right. You want to start us with your number 10? Um, I, I certainly will. All right. I'm excited. <sighs> All right. My number 10. Oh, don't look. I have it I literally facing right towards Please, you. Please. Okay. I can't see. <laughs> the Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage. And this right... <laughs> I absolutely love. We wrote it the last time we were there in October, I think, when mm-hmm. we were there last. Mm-hmm. And a, it's way longer than what I remembered. I remembered it being like so a five long. minute ride. It's like a twenty eight minute ride. <laughs> so long, you guys. Um, and it's a little bit claustrophobic, but it's so magical. And I loved going when. So there's areas where it's underwater, areas where it's not underwater. I don't know how they do it. There's some sort of magic. If you know, please don't tell me because I'm just gonna assume that it's magic. But it's so cool watching the the bubbles go up and then they've got all these different like animatronics in there and they've got some real fish and some they've got coral and that kind of stuff but it's again one of those rides that's so fun to ride yourself but then looking at like Gigi and stuff like that she's like we are a thousand percent twenty thousand leagues under the sea like it is just she fully believes yeah. it yeah is that's what that used to be right that was twenty thousand leagues under the sea yes. and then now it's got this new finding nemo overlay yeah. i mean i don't know how new it is now but yeah, um, 15, 20 years old. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> I bet. Or maybe, yeah. I'll have to look way. at the year. But yeah, if you have any claustrophobic tendencies, I just wouldn't. Yeah. I and have no a way little out, bit of think. one and I was okay, but I couldn't think about it. Do you know what I mean? Like when you go in, you are in. And I just had to not think about it. Yeah. I'm sure there's an emergency exit if you needed to, but yeah. you are, you are. Like maybe you let the rest of your your party go on and you don't and I'm I'm being genuine with you guys. That was one I did not put on my list and it, I didn't even consider it because I think if presented with the other another opportunity to ride it, I would probably be like, I'm good. I'm gonna go get a churro. You guys go ahead and ride that weird claustrophobic. But it yeah. is a cool ride in itself. So I'm yeah. glad I have ridden it. But yeah, yeah, you've ridden it twice now. So I think yeah, you're, you I, got I'm it. Good. You're good. I'm good. And it's I, I will say I don't feel like I have claustrophobic tendencies, but even still, I get a little claustrophobic on that ride. But I would still ride it again. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're getting off within you know 15 minutes or whatever, yeah. so it's not like it's yeah. an hour, but it feels long when you're a little freaked out. <laughs> All right, my number ten. And I have only ridden this once, so it's a little sketchy, and I almost didn't include it. The Matterhorn bobsleds. Yep. I just feel, okay, first of all, if you've never ridden it, it is the most rickety, <laughs> wicked, like, it will slap you around, you will have back problems that you didn't have before type of ride, which is another reason I almost didn't include it. But it is one of those, like, rite of passage. Like, you have to ride it if you go to Disneyland, unless you do have back problems, in which case, for real, don't. Please don't. <laughs> or if you're pregnant, absolutely not. But, um, yeah, it's just one of those that's so old and almost mysterious in that way. It's been there since opening day. And what's cool is if you watch, I want to say it was Disney Disneyland's opening day video, whatever, you can find it on too. YouTube. Yeah, there's a the... lot of times I want to bring that up. But... It's really cool to watch, and they had um, like alpine climbers or whatever on the outside of the ride, like climbing it on opening day just for fun. So I, I just I think about that. What is it, 1955? Well, it wasn't the opening day because that wasn't opening. They did the big opening day spectacle mm-hmm. uh, with Art Linkletter and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But then they did. I think it was a five year anniversary. And also again, I'll look at the actual dates. But it, it was the five year anniversary when they added the Matterhorn and they did okay, all that stuff. Okay, so there so we it go. Was the second big like tv special so that did. one is yeah. the one i'm thinking With of your host ronnie reagan <laughs> was it really yeah and then i think nixon was there and he oh. was t- he was talking about the the monorail and stuff they like had that. all the people there interesting and then art link letter and walt try and was that that one if you have not other? seen the clip and if we well, we can link it maybe to the yeah. timestamp if we can find it where yeah walt disney and art link letter he's like hosting and there's like a isn't there a mic with a wire and they try to turn like around it. and walk towards the castle away from the camera. And like, it's the most awkward, like one of them tries to pat him on the back and the other is like trying to hold, like, it's so unbelievably <laughs> awkward and I could watch it on repeat. It's so good. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so it's yeah, like that, that one is fun, but it's like, you may be right at once, twice, and then you're probably good. It's like Patty Lapone on the Tonys when she did Evita. 
And at one point she does her, there's a boy too because he loves you. Da, 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 da. And then she goes like this in her whole Ava. And then she tries to put her arm through because she's supposed to like put her arm like linked like that. And she misses it. And she just goes like that. <laughs> <laughs> just completely misses his arm. <laughs> Great. Oh, I'll incredible. link both of those below if I can find them. <laughs> All right. You ready? Mm-hmm. My number nine, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Now, is Mr. Toad a great ride? No. Mm -mm. Is it a do not miss? No. But is it a great ride and am I not going to miss it? You betcha. (laughs) You betcha. (laughs) I would say that's true for a lot of the dark rides. Like, they're not great, but they're wonderful. (laughs) Are they exhilarating? (laughs) No. But are they super fun? Yep. Yep. (laughs) Are they Luan painted with scenes? Yeah. Are you gonna are they what? Like Luan, like uh, like what sets are made out of, like the. Oh, thin, I've never like, heard of that. Yeah, then it's like like real thin sheets of wood that are like yeah. painted like sets. Wonderful. Yeah. Do I'm... they smell like bromine? You betcha. You betcha. <laughs> <laughs> and am I gonna write them? You bet. Every time, if it's a forty-five minute wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, but I just love it, and of course, it's not in the Magic Kingdom anymore in Walt Disney World, so it's it's when we're there, it's a really fun thing to to write it. Mm-hmm. We I don't know if we've mentioned yet. So your brother now lives in Southern California with his wife, and so we are planning to go more often. Mm-hmm. And so maybe that's one of those rides that I might, you know, I can I don't have to hit every time, but up until now, you know, I've always wanted to really make sure that I I don't miss it because you can't do it in mm-hmm. in Walt Disney World. Sorry, I have to stop Tyler from when he hits the table because I know it messes with the mic so if you're only listening you hear it so if you saw on video i just tried to stop him like a teacher would very gently um i did not put that on my list but it was one that was in my list you know what i mean yeah. and i had to weed it out but mm-hmm. it's it's so good in that way that you know it's kind of a weird even movie if you've ever seen it yeah like i've tried to watch it i'm like uh but it just has that wonderful nostalgic feeling and i feel like that is that is disneyland at this yeah. point I think for most people, there's so much history behind all of it out there. And you know that Walt Disney himself walked, you know, down Main Street and like he actually saw a lot of this. So that piece of it just amplifies all of it to me. Yeah. Well, it was Tony Baxter who said something to the effect of, and I'm going to mess this up, but it was something to the effect of Walt Disney World, Magic Kingdom is spectacular. Disneyland is charming. Like that was Mm. his distinction between the two. And I feel like that charming sort of encompasses the you know the nostalgia that you feel too i love the word charming it's perfect for that yeah when when i was a kid we used to go on road trips with my mom and my aunt and they would every every little town oh isn't that just charming oh look at that little b and b it's just so charming and my brother and i we would get to the point where we were just saying the same thing oh jason isn't that tree just charming (laughs) look at that fire hydrant how charming (laughs) all right so you're number nine this is where my special alice in wonderland mug comes in my number nine was it or is the Alice in Wonderland little ride. And Tyler, you even said what ride? Like you couldn't even I remember can't even it. Picture it. I think so. It's just like a classic dark ride kind of, you know, but it's kind of a coastery track, if you will. Remember, it's like the little is it the caterpillar that you're on? I vaguely remember. Yeah. This, yeah. Um, it's just so cute. And again, it's one of those. It's not like the most exhilarating ride, but I just love all of the scenes. And Alice in Wonderland is one of those like weird off movies <laughs> that's just odd and we all know it but and yet we still kind of like it and it the fact that there's a ride devoted to it is so bizarre to me and I love it so much and so I think that's it it's just it's so cool to see that movie brought into like when you're going through the area of the flowers talking and you're going through all those different you see Tweedledee and Tweedledum and I just I think it's so cool and I love that the ride vehicle is if I'm remembering right it's like the little caterpillar yeah I think and it goes like it's outside and inside and I think that part of it is kind of cool because that's pretty rare in those kinds of rides yeah I'm pretty sure I remember that now that you're saying that I remember that last time like just seeing the caterpillars it's just so cool yeah I love that so my number eight Mm -hmm. the storybook canal boats I don't know why I just love these little scenes they're so (laughs) fun (laughs) And it, it, I think the two times, the last two times we've gone, it's the first thing we did both times. So I'm just excited to be in the parks. I, it's like sunny out. And like, I've just, I, I, I love, I just love them. And it's just these little dioramas that you just slowly go by, but they do a good job of keeping them up to date. So like there's a frozen one now and stuff like that, but it's just, just a fun little, fun little thing to do for 10 minutes. <laughs> It is. And of course, having little girls, they absolutely, well, Genevieve absolutely loves it too. Yeah. And it just feels very on brand for Disneyland. Again, it's charming. Yeah. 
It's cute and charming. I would agree. I'll talk more about that later. Okay. <laughs> My number eight is Pirates of the Caribbean. And you cheated. We said we weren't going to put the, the... I didn't say that. I said I, I, most of mine won't be overlap. This one is special, though, and it, it deserved is, yeah. its own mention because it's, I mean, it's the OG Pirates, right? And furthermore, the fact that you go through, kind of like in Mexico and Epcot, you go through the Blue Bayou restaurant as you're starting the ride, mm -hmm. right? And then you go into it. There's something about that that's always been cool to me, and also... If you were a kid in the 90s and you saw the sing-along songs where they do the Pirates of the Caribbean one, I watched that on repeat. And again, I did not go to Disney World or land at all until I was like 21. So this was just this mystical land to me. And they do Pirates of the Caribbean and it's literally just a ride through basically with the song, which is now that I'm thinking about it kind of like ahead of its time. It's like... <laughs> But it was so cool to see. And that's the one that was being filmed. So that was the one I watched so many times. And it is a little bit different than the one in Disney World. Um, still has drops. A lot of you guys felt very strongly that the one in Disneyland, as I read through some of your guys' comments on our Instagram page, which is at Disneyville Podcast. <laughs> um, but a lot of you guys felt strongly that the one in Disneyland is so much better than Disney World. I don't know that it's so much better, but I do just generally like it better because it's the original. Yeah. Like, it's just... And again, I love the part that goes through the Blue Bayou. I would say it's better, but I don't know if I would say it's way better, but I do, there's a lot of aspects of it that I like more yeah. than Walt Disney World. And I, the, the, the biggest, of course, is the fact that you're in the Blue Bayou. I just love that. But yeah, I would agree that it's better, but exponentially better? I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. All right, my number seven. Mm -hmm. The Sleeping Beauty Castle walkthrough. Yes. I love that. It, it's, it's what, it gives the people what they want. And I can't tell you how many times I had clients who were like, okay, so what can we do in the castle? And they're shocked to, like, in Walt Disney World, they're like, well, there's a restaurant and, like, bippity boppity <laughs> But you can't get you can't. reservations. <laughs> but uh, other than that, there's not a whole lot to do in the castle. And I think a lot of people go to Disney the first time expecting to be able to go in the castle. So I love that in Disneyland, you can go in the castle. They have these little, the little dioramas. Dioramas is the theme of the day, I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, it's so funny because the last time, we did it. I remember it. I remember it was like, it was cute and all that. But Gigi went through it three times, four times. She brought every single person in our party with her one at a time. Yeah. And I remember she came out and I said, did you go through it? I think I said, did you go through it twice? And she said, no, just two times. <laughs> <laughs> so I have that memory associated with it too. But it just, it's looking through it, you know, with the eyes of a child. It's just, just a fun way to go inside the castle. Mm -hmm. Also, when you say dioramas, dioramas, dioramas. I think about a shoebox, like oh, 100%, 100%, right? Okay, what are you on, number seven? Number seven. Okay. I was excited about this one. And again, I'm a little cheaty because we technically don't talk about like food and stuff, but we kind of do. I mean, in this episode, that is. Uh, get horchata cold brew at Rancho del Zocalo. So I don't know that I'm saying it right. I had to look up the name and make sure I got it right. And then, of course, take that and walk the shops, just sit and people watch, whatever. But that horchata cold brew was so good, especially on a hot day. It's got that little bit of cinnamon. It's got, of course, the coffee. So good. The food there is really good, too. But if you're just going for one thing, get that horchata cold brew. I think about it a weird amount. I couldn't believe how good that was. was we so were good. standing there, and we were like, All right, we really want some coffee, but the main street, whatever, was so far away. And we're like, what are we going to do? So I literally messaged my agents, and I was like, what should we get? And resoundingly i think almost all of them were like get the horchata cold brew At it's so rancho del zocalo yeah it was it was so good and side note right near there um mirabelle meets from encanto there's like a whole little area i mean she's only there sometime but they're well i'm assuming she meets there now that i'm saying that i know we saw her there but i don't know if it's still a regular thing yeah. but there's just this beautiful like kind of plaza area right near there just to people watch but yeah the taste 10 out of 10. All right, my number six, and we won't go into it too far, but the Matterhorn. Mm. And again, I love the history of it going back, but then it is, it was way more thrilling than what I think I, I thought it was going to be, knowing that it was built when it was built. I kind of thought, oh, it'll be a fun little roller coaster, but it really was super duper thrilling. Oh, and yeah. I just, I, I remember the that one point we, I was zooming past and then the Yeti kind of jumped up and it actually scared me. So it was, I loved that. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that part of yeah, it. Yeah, and I was like, ah! <laughs> But yeah, I love that. So definitely, um, definitely love it. And I love, like we talked about that, that old video is just 
so fun. So fun to watch. Yeah, if you just want to walk, run run down memory lane, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was, Wade into memory <laughs> memory town. <laughs> it was <laughs> taking your kids down to Disney town. <laughs> Uh, it wasn't open the last time we were there, though, so we didn't get to ride it. So hopefully the next time we go, it'll be open yeah. again. I always feel like every time we go, there's something, and that would be true for Disney World, too. There's always something big that's closed. And I'm like, darn. Yeah. Anyway. When we went to Disneyland Paris, Space Mountain was closed. So Space yes. Mountain is not on the list. We have been to Disneyland twice. Still have not ridden Space Mountain there. Nope. Nor it's always Space been closed. Mountain. It's always closed. Yeah. Or we just couldn't make it work with the wait time or whatever else. So mm. definitely have to make that a point. Yes. Um, okay. I'm sorry. I'm very excited about my number six. And again, I'm Chidi Magoo over here because <laughs> I'm just going to do it the way I'm going to do it. It's your podcast. Do it the way you want. Number six. All of Toontown. Just all of it. Do not miss Toontown. Here's the thing. Disney World, we didn't know how good we had it with Toontown. And then they closed it down for good and tore it all down. And now we've got, I mean, the beautiful, please, I would not trade it, New Fantasyland, which is now just part of Fantasyland, which includes like Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and the aerial ride, like that whole area, Beauty and the Beast. The Storybook Circus. Wasn't it where Castle Storybook Sto- Circus that was? That sounds right. Yes. So I guess I kind of recent. What was where, was there just nothing where, mm, we're going to have to look at some old oh, maps oh, yeah. and schematics. Oh, yeah. Either way, you're right. I think it is Storybook Circus because it was kind of back in that. I think so, Either yeah. way. Also love Storybook Circus. My point is, what well, couldn't they have just also kept Toontown and just keep building? Disney World has so much land. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Toontown just reopened in Disneyland. And now they have Mickey's Runaway Railway there, Mickey and Minnie's, which is amazing. And that's totally on the list. So I'm including that. But they also, if you have little kids, they have Mickey and Minnie's House, which is so cute. They've got like Roger Rabbit cartoon spin. They have a Chippendale gadget coaster I've never even ridden. So much out there, and I just feel like I'm, well, A, I know, I am so excited the next time we go to go explore Toontown. It's, for me, it's going to feel like a blast from the past from old Disney World. Yep, yep. It's going to be weird. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. That's not on my list, but it, it's, it was, it was an honorable mention. Yeah, I totally agree. And there's, I just feel like it's an area, like, especially if you don't have kids, you might be like, oh, we can skip it. No, no, go. It's so cool. Well, I mean, just go and ride Runaway Railway at least. Yeah. But, um... I, I'm just so excited. It's just a whimsical, fun little so area. Whimsical. I love that. All right. My number five is Fantasmic. Mine too. Whoa. Oh. So you tell me your reasons first. Oh. Put, Put me on you the on spot. the spot. <laughs> I love, and I we maybe talked about this in a previous episode, how close you are to the show. That's you're one. right there. Yep. Disney World, you're like 100 million miles away <laughs> in an amphitheater a mile. <laughs> and in this case, you're, I mean... The boat is coming around. It's right there. You see like the pirate ship that's going to come around. You see it before it comes around. And that is the coolest part. If you're sitting like kind of to the right mm-hmm. watching the show, you can see like all the actors on the pirate ship waiting for the, for the pirate ship to start and come into the light and like actually be a part of the show. Yeah. That's my favorite thing. Yeah. I had two things on my list. Mm-hmm. Tall and beats. <laughs> no, you don't get oh, the reference. Anyway. Well, I know no, it no, has I had to two, be Dwight Schrute. But. I had two things on my list. One was you sit closer the second thing is the pirate ship, because we don't have a pirate ship in Walt Disney World. We just have the the big uh, like steamboat, steamboat, yeah, the paddle wheel or whatever. That pirate ship is so cool, mm-hmm. and when it comes out and it blasts that cannon, you can put me to bed. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> Little ten year old pirate Tyler is yeah. in heaven. Oh, I just love it. Oh, it's so good. That's the best part of the whole show. That really is cool. And it again, it it's just so close. Like you can actually see the actors' faces. Whereas in Disney World, I love that Fantasmic as well. But it is there is that sense of like you're kind of removed from it. Yeah, it feels feels more like a spectacle. Whereas in this yeah. case, it's it's like you are a part of the show. It's oh, yeah. right there. That's such a good point. Yeah, oh. the other one's a big spectacle. This one is a little bit more intimate, but still but it's still as big. quite a spectacle. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so and good. really with things like that happening that close to you it's so much cooler yeah like a big cannon sound and you oh, know my gosh. It scares me every time <laughs> i'm so excited to see that one again that's yeah. going to be the theme of this we cannot wait to do all of this again you know okay my number four mm-hmm. is haunted mansion but specifically the nightmare before christmas overlay mm-hmm I did not realize. I had heard people talk about this for years, and they're like, "Oh, this overlay is coming back." And I'm like, "So what? They put a couple decorations up, and I mean, what? Who cares?" Call it a day, dude. <laughs> I did not realize the extent to which this overlay basically is a brand new ride. 
totally different ride. I could not believe how much I loved that. We wrote it three times, I think. I think so. We couldn't stop. I was like, was, I, I, I can't need stop more. writing. <laughs> It was so good. It was so like good. They genuinely, I mean, they basically build an entirely new ride for a couple months out of the year. I loved it. And I mean, I like Nightmare Before Christmas well enough. It's not like my favorite thing in the world. But no. you know I, who loves it? Our five or almost five year old. Yeah. Genevieve like loves it. I'm yeah. like, honey. <laughs> yeah. But no, anyway. it's 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 pretty incredible what they do. It really is. It's Oh, that's not on my list. I mean, it was on my honorable mentions because again, well, I was like, well, I don't want to double down on Haunted Mansion, but you're right. The holiday overlay deserves its own mention, maybe even more so than pirates. So now I want to change my list. Oh well, <laughs> you're right. It is. It is so much bigger and more than you probably think. So you will feel like if you go twice in one year and you ride the regular haunted mansion and then you go ride this one, they really do feel like two different rides. Yeah, hundred percent. Totally different storyline. Totally different like characters, if you will, mm-hmm. mm. and different music playing. Like yeah. it's not the same. <sighs> it's so. You should well do done. that more often with other rides. Yeah, I wish they would. I wish they would do. Um the uh so they do hyperspace mountain in california as well i wish they would do more stuff like that in walt disney world i understand why they don't but so what's the difference wish... between like hyperspace mountain and space it has mountain? to do with star wars what so they redo i've never ridden it so i can't tell you i but didn't I even do know, know they, that they redo it for and i think it's like a couple months out of the year sort of the same thing oh like my god anyway that's something we could go into a whole slew of the reasons why they do different things like that in disneyland versus walt disney world but we're not going to go into that but yeah i uh I, I just love it. They did such mm-hmm. a good job with that. And I wanted to do I wanted to do more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, you're number four. All right. My number four is actually the Storybook Land Canal Boats. Nice. Now, here's the thing. I feel like this is one of those rides that if it had been at Disney World, and maybe there was a time when it was, but I don't think so. I know they used to have swan boats yeah, that would swan. go around, but I, I that was definitely at Disney World, but I don't think it was like little scenes. I think it was just like swan boats you would go around in. And obviously remember. that's gone. I'll have to look it up. I kind of feel like it was, but maybe it was Well, wasn't. when we do our history episodes, this these yeah. are the kinds of things, you we'll know? Yeah. But um, this is the kind of ride that Disney World would have gotten rid of, and in theory has. That is because it's not anything super technologically advanced. There's nothing that thrilling about it, but it is still so enjoyable. And the fact that Disneyland keeps these kinds of rides going is why, I mean, that's why I love Disneyland. That's mm-hmm. These are the kinds of things I think about. I think about the cute little canal boats that's that our kids love that we also love. The dark rides. Like, yes, we still love Rise of the Resistance, absolutely. But it's so nice that Disneyland kind of keeps that balance between yeah. the charming, sweet, maybe more original type rides and the new age ones. Whereas Disney World, yes, they do keep some of theirs. And y- y'all, please, I, you know I love Disney World. <laughs> But when I'm comparing them, that is the thing I think about. Yeah. That Disney World kind of, a lot of times, they'll get rid of those to make way for other stuff. Whereas Disneyland, yeah. even though they have less land to work with, still keeps well, those charming it'll be rides. interesting. So the, the shareholder meeting was last week, I think it was. And Bob Iger said they're investing $17 billion <sighs> in Walt Disney World. Billion with a B. In Disney World? <laughs> over the next 10 years. So that's going to be a I huge. I bet they're building a fifth invest- gate. I don't think they will, but we'll see. They probably don't they need could. to. With that amount of money, they could, but it's also over the course of ten years. So I don't know if. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so we'll see. But in a lot of the other. I mean, it took them about ten years to build Tron. So. That's true. <laughs> but in a lot of the other, I mean, that's a, a staggering amount of money, and they could do so much with that. So I'll be curious what they end up because they really didn't say what they're going to do. But that's all in Florida. So <laughs> it'll be wild to see what they do. But mm-hmm. in a lot of other parks, they're building like international parks. They're building you know, slower moving family style rides like that. So I could see them taking some of that and moving it to Walt Disney World and maybe bringing more, you know, sort of like what they have in the Magic Kingdom. They have a lot of slow moving, you know, family rides mm-hmm. that they don't have in other parks. And I could see them doing it. I think they just built a Disney or a uh, Beauty and the Beast ride. Oh um, my gosh, I would love that. I, I want to go in the West I Wing, you guys. I remember which Beyond park it was the at. restaurant. I want to go in a ride and yeah. go in the West Wing. But it's just look at one of those slow moving things like for family. So I, I have a feeling maybe they'll do some of that, but I think they're going to expand the four parks they have. I, I don't think they'll add a fifth. They, yeah, they don't need That's, to, but yeah. Who knows? But that'd be a fun episode idea. Somebody mentioned that of you know, speculating if they did open a fifth park, what would we want it to be? So that'll be something fun to think about. Ooh. Yeah. That tickles my brain. <laughs> okay so your no, we, wait, your number do, four i already did my number four did you do your number four mm-hmm. that was the canal boats okay so then my number three mm-hmm. is the disneyland railroad specifically the dioramas 
the thing too. <laughs> Hold on. Mine was number three too. Really? Mm-hmm. So again, you have the nostalgia factor. You have all those cool things. You have all the little hidden things. Like when they, um, when you're standing at the, uh, which one is it? The uh, New Orleans Square one. You can hear the telegraph going and it's like Disneyland opened in 1955. Oh I don't know. It says gosh. something specific, whatever. So like all you those cool hear things. it, yeah. the audio. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think the, we ever wrote it all the way around. I think we took it and then we got off. I didn't even know these huge dioramas existed until this last time we did mm-hmm. it. And they are monstrous. They have a Grand Canyon one. They have a one with a bunch of dinosaurs and stuff like that. Gosh. They're so intricate and amazing. And I just absolutely loved them. And I cannot believe I didn't know they existed before now. I know. It makes me look at Disney World's railroad and be like, okay. Yeah. You <laughs> no, listen, I still love it. And it's always closed now. It's reopened. Thank goodness. Yeah. But yeah, when you compare what you see on Disney World's versus Disneyland's, Disneyland's is way more epic. And it's, it's, it's a standalone ride in itself it's great that you can get on and get off at one of the i think there's four stops but um i mean it's just a ride in itself yeah and it's you know family friendly everyone you could be pregnant you can have a three week old baby i don't know why you're there but you hey man (laughs) you do you my point is you know it it is a standalone ride in itself and i think that's a big part of why it was so high on mine too like Mm -hmm. it's just it's not just a mode of transportation. Exactly. It's so cool. And then you factor in again all the history and all the Walt aspects of the railroad and this and the other. It's it's so magical. Mm. Yeah. And I feel like you can't go to Disneyland and not ride the railroad. Yeah. You have to, guys. You you have to. They won't let you leave until you do. It's like Costco. <laughs> you can't go in and get two things. You, have you to have absolutely have to have a cart full or they will not let you leave. Like, excuse me, sir. You turn back around and you, and you go better buy, buy some more stuff you don't you need, need. You need some TP. We know you need some TP. <laughs> I know you still have your giant thing of TP from the last time you were here, but you need more just in do case. Do you need 28 apples? Because I think you do. <laughs> I think you need 28 apples and half are going to go bad. <laughs> okay. All right. So that was your number three too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You said? Okay. So then my number two. Mm. So excited. Great moments with Mr. Lincoln. Oh, so high. So high. Again, it's something you can only do in Disneyland. And this, okay, my two and my number two and number three, I could have flip flopped because okay. they're both sort of that nostalgic, only in Disneyland kind of thing that I just love. But again, I go back to the history and all the history behind them creating this audio animatronic, and I love it. and I love that it's still there. They could have changed it, they could have done the Hall of Presidents, they could have done so many things, or at least something different. And I love that they have kept this great moments with Mr. Lincoln, partly because Walt loved it so much because it's such a um, historical aspect of the company and how they were able to build this and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's so many great stories about that ride being developed and being created that... uh, Tell the one about the... I was going to say, the one... I don't even know if this is true, but I heard about it years ago. But we've heard tell. (laughs) That when they were doing it, so it's a hydraulic system and there's... Which means there's fluid and uh, and that's what's the pressure causing it to to move. And Mm -hmm. at one point, and I got to look this up, but they put, there was like a red dye in the, uh, in the fluid that caused the hydraulic system to work. And I don't know why it was red, but I guess they were doing it for, for like some test audiences. And first the audiences were like, they thought it was a real actor. They didn't realize that it was a robot because at that time that just hadn't been done. What didn't exist. And yeah. so then I guess something malfunctioned and the red started to bleed through his shirt or something like that. And they thought, oh my gosh, they're recreating the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. What's wrong with these people? Now, is imagine? that true? Is that folklore? I don't know, but I love that. It's story. a pretty great piece of folklore if it's made up. <laughs> uh, but the it just the patriotism and it just gets me every time. Mm. Yeah, that wasn't on my list, and it was a really hard one to to wrestle out. But I'm thinking it it it, it really is cool, and it probably should have been on my list. But it's because it is. It's just historic, and that technology didn't exist, and that paved the way for everything. Yeah. When it comes to their animatronics and I mean, it, it literally paved the way. So there's a reason like anytime you watch a documentary on Disney parks, that is always told about the Abraham Lincoln because that was the basis for like almost everything else they do when it comes to that. So yeah. started with birds and then we ended up with Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> Tiki um, room. It's not yeah. on our list either. All right. I'm switching my number one and two right here and now. Oh, wow. Okay. Because I had it the other way, but as the more I think about it, I got to switch them. Okay. You guys wouldn't have known, but I felt like I needed to share <laughs> because I felt like I was lying. <laughs> so my number two then is the Sleeping Beauty Castle walkthrough. Wow. That's high. Yeah, I know. And as you mentioned it lower, I'm like, it deserves, <laughs> it deserves to be number one or two. First of all, I mean the castle period. 
the castle. Never heard of it. <laughs> ever heard of it? That is Disneyland. That sweet, charming, shorter little castle. And when you compare, because I can't help it, Disney World to Disneyland, and when you're walking down Main Street looking at the castle, obviously the Disney World one is much bigger. But the Disneyland one, like that is the one that when you see pictures of Walt, he's in front of. That's it. That's the one. Mm-hmm. Hasn't changed. I mean, they've painted it and stuff, but it hasn't changed. And that piece of it is so cool to me. And I ne- I, like I always get the goosebumps anytime we round the corner and see it. And like you said, the fact that you can actually go in it, there's never a line. And it's beautiful. Like they've got the, the scenes that are within there are kind of interactive, if I'm remembering right. Not like you interact, but like it moves and changes there's like cool lighting and the fact that a four-year-old would get it and love it and want to see it over and over again is so cool and Sleeping Beauty that tale is so old school like that is an OG story that really like I feel like a lot of kids don't care about so it's so neat that that castle is still Sleeping Beauty's Mm -hmm. castle and they're still telling that really old tale yeah well and what's wild is that movie hadn't even come out yet when they first started more like an ad for it yeah exactly yeah it was a pretty good ad. Yeah. It was a very expensive Honestly, ad. My absolute favorite picture of Walt is him walking through the park and you see him under the castle um, walking through. That's my absolute favorite picture. I just, it it, it gives me all, all the feelings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, you're number two. No, my number one. Okay. Ooh. We've made it. Indiana Jones. <laughs> I Out love of that. all of them. Yeah. And I know there's no nostalgia, I know, but I just love it. It's so fun. And every time I get off that ride, I'm so pumped. Like my adrenaline's running. It's like, it's the same thing as Dinosaur. We talked about that last episode. But man, it gets me. It gets the blood pumping and I love it. I cannot believe that's your number one though. Really? I love it too. I can't believe that's your number one of yeah. all of the things. Yeah. It is really good though. <laughs> I can't even like, you know, it is really good. But, that was my number 10 and I took it off to put on Matterhorn. Oh, gotcha. All right, so Miss Smarty Pants, what's your number? No, one? no, no. I want to hear more about why you love Indiana Jones. <laughs> well, I mean, like I said, it's all the same thing stuff we, stuff we talked about with dinosaurs. It's just a different overlay and that kind of stuff. But it's just a thrilling ride. I just it it just I just love it. I mean, the music is VV epic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, my number one. Bet you wouldn't be able to guess it. I didn't. And I'm totally cheating again. <laughs> Breakfast at the Carnation Cafe on Main Street, but you got to be sitting outside. I don't care what you're eating. You get whatever you want, okay? You want Mickey waffles? Sure. Overnight oats? Yeah, you better believe I looked at the menu before I put this on my... <laughs> I had to make sure they still serve breakfast. Oh, that is one of my top favorite memories ever mm-hmm. of being there. 100%. Literally, and I remember, I think we went up and said, you know, we've got a reservation. We're willing to wait to be able to sit outside because they have inside seating too, right? Mm-hmm. And so we did... And just being there in the morning, sipping on our coffee, mm-hmm. eating whatever, and just watching Main Street, people watching. Yeah. It was the ultimate. You're hearing the Main Street music play like, oh my gosh, you guys, I can't think of a more wonderful Disney morning than that. So if you've never done that, or if you've got a trip coming up and you can swing it, make a reservation at the Carnation Cafe for breakfast. It will be your favorite memory. Yeah, I would agree uh, with that. It's, you're it's, right in the, in the heart really of it. It's really high on my list, yeah. I I can't believe Disney World doesn't have any option like that. Even in Paris, there was Walt's Restaurant. Now, that was upstairs and inside, but even that was so cool to be able to sit on Main Street. And, of course, you could could also, like, do Carnation Cafe during a parade. Like, that'd be pretty cool, too. But I just like the morning vibe. It's just wonderful. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I I have no notes on that. That is a good number one. Our number ones were so different. Very different. So, we got a lot more to talk about, y'all. So, strap in. And I've got a Zoom meeting in, like, what time is it? And okay. one hour. In one hour. All right, we can do this. Yeah, we, we don't have another hour worth of content. But so some of my honorable mentions, I don't know if you have any, and we can rapid fire these. So again, if you were like literally listening to this and making a list, if you're driving and listening to this and you're making a list, you better pull over. <laughs> um, some other things that I didn't mention, and I'm sure you have some too, that I'm like, you can't go to Disneyland and not do these. Indiana Jones is on mine, but you mm-hmm. already talked about Abe Lincoln. Mm-hmm. Okay. All the dark rides. So we're talking Alice in Wonderland, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, like you said. Mm -hmm. Snow White's Enchanted Wish. Yes. Very cool. And it was used to be scarier. Now it's not. I kind of wish it was back to the scary (laughs) version, but it's fine. Uh, Pinocchio's Daring Journey is actually kind of scary. (laughs) And Peter Pan's Flight. Yep. All of them. You got to ride them all at least once, even if you don't have kids. They're just so weird and fun. And 
especially if you can get, you know, try to finagle it. Don't wait like an hour for any of them. Yeah. Peter All Pan's flight is hard. Like that's one you might need to get a light. Uh, small World. Did you put Small World on that list? Oh, too? I did not. Well, yeah, I guess but the same kind of thing. So any of those like Fantasyland rides, the, the, the kitty rides, still fun. Highly recommend. Um, yeah, so I had a couple on mine. So Toontown was on my honorable mention list. Pinocchio, mm-hmm. Snow White, all those that you just mentioned. One that I really wanted to put on the list, but I couldn't make it work, was the storytelling at Royal Theater. Yes! I loved that. I couldn't believe how much I loved that. But we ended up standing there for, I don't know, we, only, we were only there for like 10 minutes. But it was so fun, and they have like the jesters come out, and it's like a little stage show they do. Just um, to the left of the castle but I when you're had, looking at it. They had a live piano player. And I love that. It was more, it just seemed so. It felt um, like royal, like royal little theater show. Yeah. It wasn't just like a little theme park show, I feel like. And it, I mean, it totally was, but I just feel like, and it was a different telling of Beauty and the Beast, the one that we saw. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just, I love that it was like a real live theater show. It wasn't a recorded track, anything like that. It just felt so much more raw and I live put that theater on my list. to me. And it was cool because, you know, there's a little bit of seating there under the theater area because it's like an outside theater. But what was cool is we didn't even know it was there or what was going on. And we were just walking by and we're like, oh, so we just parked the stroller and kind of stood back behind it. And you could mm-hmm. still watch the show kind of come and go. I think one of us went and got a snack while the other was watching. So it was a kind of a nice like drive by thing where yeah. you can just kind of see bits of it if you want, but you don't have to be like committed to it. Yeah, I agree. Um, so other ones that I wouldn't miss that we mentioned, like they might be doubled in Disney World. I put Rise of the Resistance, mm-hmm. Space Mountain, mm-hmm. Big Thunder Mountain. I think Splash Mountain might now be. I know. I, I think it might be closed too, or it's about it's to close. About to, be closed, I think. Um, to be changed, which yeah. is exciting. Um, Haunted Mansion. You talked about Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Jungle Cruise. Jungle Cruise. I mean, so there's a lot that should be on your list that weren't on our list. Disneyland is amazing, you guys. There's so so much, and the fact that they're able to fit this much stuff in, you know, a way smaller footprint than Disney World is crazy. Yeah. So okay. So next we're gonna do two quick. Uh, reviews. So we always try and do our most recent reviews on Apple Podcasts um, because those are, uh, they really do mean so much to us. And so we just, I we, felt like yeah. this is a nice way for us to like say thank you and like, and, and, and bring it up. So, um, and just brag on ourselves, but I'm just kidding. It does feel weird to read these <laughs> it out does, loud but though, like, but I was trying to think so like, nice. how else can we like say thank you for doing this? Cause it really means so much. Yeah. Um, so, uh, KB120892. Beep, boop, boop. I know, it makes me think of Star <laughs> my, Wars. My favorite Disney adults. I've been following the Bronze for years. I am so happy they started this podcast. It just feels so right. I just love everything about this. My only complaint is there's only an episode every other Monday. <laughs> soon. I pro- hopefully soon. Well, And by that, I mean like four months. But we'll get there. We'll get there. The people want more. P.S. The Disney adult in the uh, the Disney adult in the subject was a reference to this last episode. I'm a Disney adult and proud. Yes. LOL. I love that. That's so sweet. Um, We are also Disney adults. Um, okay. A 10 out of 10 pod. This is L Marion. Great podcast that makes you feel like you're talking with a bunch of old friends about your favorite places and things. That just makes me smile. Also my awakening into the realization that not every family has in-depth debates about what fake Disney apartment they would live in if given the choice. <laughs> so was that last episode or the episode before where- I think in Epcot. Or oh episode. yeah. Where we talked about like where you would live yeah. if you had to live in Disney World. And I love that idea. It's yeah. so cool. I uh, I started reading Kingdom Keepers, which is uh, like a, I wouldn't even say young adult. It's oh, like no, a it's definitely middle YA. school. That's what I mean. That's Is that young adult? I thought well, young it's adult. YA. It's like, yeah, middle school, high school. That's what I would. Okay. 12 year olds are not young adults and I don't care. <laughs> I know, but I think that's kind anyway, of Anyway, um, but I've never read them. People are always saying, have you read them? Have you read them? I was like, no, I haven't. But it's it's these little, you know, I would say geared towards like fifth graders, fourth, fifth graders. Yeah. Um, but they're set in the Disney parks. And in the parks, you guys. A lot of it like after hours. Yeah. And the villains are involved. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was not great, but I, it made me smile. And so I'm going to read more. Yeah. About, again, uh, it's, it's, it was, it's, yeah, yeah, it's geared towards who it's geared towards. Too. And I was like, I asked the, my agents, I was like, so have you, have you read it? A bunch of them had, and they said it's sort of on the level of um, like Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone level reading. And I would say it's even a little bit more Less. elementary than that. Um, but it's still cute. And it's anyway, a fun read. If yeah. you just like Disney or if it, you have kids that age, like buy think, them the first book. It's fun. Yeah. I think I read it in like two days. So it's not, it's not a big humble read. brag. Well, it's, I'm just saying it's a really short book. So <laughs> yeah. even, it doesn't take up a lot of time. So I do recommend reading it, but, um, I'll let you know about the other ones in the series because I just finished the first one, but I bring it up because they're in the parks at night and they're like there when no one else is there and they're in the rides and stuff like that. It's fun. Yeah. Maybe think about the apartment thing. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, I don't know if you guys can hear the literal thunderstorm that is outside our window right now. 
it's it's just been very stormy here in the I'll midwest be curious listening back to it to hear if we can hear the thunder and stuff that like we can hear it's cool we're like looking right out at the window though and it's it's i mean it's kind of cool to look yeah. at as long as we're all safe inside um so on our instagram which is at disneyville podcast we asked you guys what your numero uno favorite thing to do in disneyland was now we should have been more specific disneyland park not california avenger because a lot of you guys threw in stuff at california adventure so i think we should have i don't know either way so we weeded through and found the disneyland specific and there are some good ones tyler i don't think you've gotten to read through it yet no i haven't um making sure we're still recording because <laughs> yes last time we're like <laughs> scarred for life yeah okay so we'll just trade back and forth but okay. there these are like ideas i want to write down so the next yep. time we go you know all right wicked witch 16 said <laughs> eat beignets at golden hour and ride the train around the park oh I mean, 100%. the specificity in your guys' recommendations, 10 out of 10. Like, this is, is the content I want. <laughs> it's so good. It's so specific and so, like, I'm like, yep, I want to do exactly that. Exactly that. Like, I want to get an egg roll at Disney World there in, like, the main area. Oh, you guys can definitely hear the rain coming in there. Anyway, I want to get an egg roll and go watch the Castle Show. Like, that's the kind of specific stuff I want. So, uh, yeah, I yeah. love the idea of that. Okay, so we have two. So, our power 029 and... Mster BA425 both said the Haunted Mansion holiday. So uh, uh, one said Haunted Mansion for Halloween. The other said ha Haunted Mansion holiday, which I'm assuming they mean like the, the same thing. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's so good. It's so good. I mean, you guys know why we love it. But yeah, uh, I think we got a lot more that said that as well. But oh, it's, I bet. you know. Okay. Sin2591 said Thunder Mountain during the fireworks. I we Okay, we've done that in Walt Disney World and uh -huh. I forgot about that. I totally want to do that in Disneyland. Oh my gosh. How cool would that be? Can we book a trip now? I know. <laughs> this is getting me so pumped to go to Disneyland. Actually, you know what? While you guys are seeing slash listening to this, I think we're in Disney World when this goes live. Yes. Um, which is, we're so excited about this next trip. I we haven't go gone on a trip just us in a while. I got to get B-roll for this podcast. I mean, it's yeah. just, it's part of the job. <laughs> but actually that really was a big impetus. Yeah. I mean, beyond just obviously going and enjoying with our kids, but um yeah when i say just us we've gone with a lot of family recently which is always so much fun but we're just so excited to go with just us and the mm -hmm. two girls and when just we did the agency a... trip in january yeah. you got to go to the parks but i was in meetings and yeah stuff you day. really didn't get to yeah do the disney thing as much um okay that's martha oh martha martha is one of the agents that works for people mover travel which is the uh agency uh so she says the canoes the things i love the things i look forward to most of my trip out there so I was looking into the canoes because we have not actually mm -hmm. ridden those. It's one of like those weird things that Disneyland kept that if you have a child that can't swim, they have to wear a life jacket yeah. because it's like an actual canoe. Um, I think that's so cool, though, that they still have that. That's like one of those things that in 2023 they would have probably gotten rid of because 100%. it's not quite as safe. I mean, it's obviously still safe, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. It's not as easy to control, I think. And that the fact that they still have it is so cool. So we need to make it a point to do that as well. I next love time. that. Okay, Nelly Doroshenko, I hope I said all that right. Uh, Dole Whip, I don't know why, but it tastes the best in Disneyland than anywhere else. I definitely got the feeling, and it, it made me smile, that so many of you guys have such a deep love for Disneyland. Maybe it's your home park. Maybe it was the first one you went to. Maybe it's the only one you've gone to. You know, whatever your reasoning. But also just like we've said a million times, it's the original mm -hmm. one. And so there's definitely that feeling of like people that love Disneyland love it mm -hmm. just love it and i think that's so cool i'm so glad this last time we went we stayed where we did we were because we, i feel like we had more time in the parks and it, it truly cemented my love for disneyland mm -hmm. because i've always been a walt disney world person i'm like disneyland's great but i love walt disney world but this last time we went i was like okay i get it now disneyland really is this just incredible place that it does tug at your heartstrings in a different way and it's just mm -hmm. i just get me it. choked up right now um, I don't know if anybody said this, by the way, but thinking about the uh, the Dole Whip being better there versus in Walt Disney World, people always have like debates about that. But one thing that I didn't know was a thing until this last time is apparently pickles are really big in Disneyland, and I never heard of it, and I did not get a pickle, and I'm very butthurt about it, and I will not stop talking about it. I didn't. Yeah, get there a were a few people that mentioned the Disney pickle. pickle. I can't believe I never knew this was a thing, but I I still I made myself laugh with my. <laughs> the title of the video of that vlog that we did it a sad rainy pickleless man and i don't know why i think about that all the time and it makes me laugh vlog linked below 
<laughs> sad, rainy, pickleless man. Because it was like the end of the night, and we went up, and I knew where it was on Main Street, and it was, they were, they had already closed, and I was so sad. And it was, was so, so rainy. Sad. And then we were going out into Downtown Disney, and we were like, okay, I found a place that sells pickles in Downtown Disney. We're gonna go, and I don't, I think it was closed by the time we it's got a, there. Yeah. Something. He was so sad, you guys. So sad. And it was a very rainy night. <laughs> and I was so pickleless. <laughs> Such a sad, rainy, pickleless man. <laughs> Tyler has way too much fun naming our vlogs, okay? He really does. Um, okay, so Lizzie in 2 said, sitting on Main Street bench for the parades. So that's a big... Ooh, yeah. The, uh, the parades in Disneyland, I don't, we've never really sat and watched a Disneyland parade. We've never been able to time it right. Yeah. Like with a nap from the kids or just like where we were. And you're right. And I, the fact that there's benches on Main Street to be able to sit on... Like Disney World, they would they shoo you away. Like they have some. You got you. The the, at the uh, like up by the fire station, like up in where the flagpole is. There's a couple. Maybe Maybe that. Maybe that's the like if you were able to score. But either way, just watching the parades. And again, go to Carnation Cafe if you want to time it that way. Also, quick little tip for Disney World: we have not done this for the daytime parade. But if you time your reservation at Tony's Town Square Restaurant, they're like on the main little circle hub before you go down Main Street. You can have your reservation sit outside on the little area where you're eating and watch the parade. Now, one piece of advice. We actually just had a client come home and had this happen. So if you want to do that, whether whether you're in Epcot, you want to watch uh, the nighttime show there or whatever park you're in, if there's a restaurant and you want to go and you want to like sit there during it, you have to get a reservation really early because what happens is... If you so say you want to watch the show at seven thirty and you have a reservation for six thirty, the people who get there at five are staying. Like and it's a it's a pain. It's like people who save like beach chairs with towels and then never use them. It's, it's a like horrible that. thing, but it's one of those things that if you want to be able to sit and watch the show anywhere in Disney, people will park there for three hours. So people you have to People are crazy. <laughs> and yeah, so you have to debate, am I am I willing to sit here for two hours? And, you know, and sometimes magic happens and it just works out. But you have to know, like, okay, I, I need to get a 5.30 reservation for a show at 7.30. And that's that happened to us at California Grill. Um, basically the same thing. Our reservation was like an hour before the fireworks. And we and again, we still got to see them from there. But we were literally like standing still waiting for a table. So it was yeah. kind of odd. But it is good mind. to know. Yeah. If you were like banking on that. Okay. Murphy YKT said eating ice cream from Gibson Girl while sat on Main Street at the end of the night. Uh, she so said... I, whilst did i not say that whilst <laughs> i didn't hear the t I love and that. i love that whilst. love it okay yes i want to i need to make that a part of my vernacular yeah, bring that back in <laughs> right um but yeah i i love the idea of that eating ice cream at the end of the night yes like you've been sweating all day i worked it in <laughs> you've been sweating all day and you're like everything's dry and you're feeling better but you still need to cool down a little bit you get your ice cream <laughs> but i love that and again just the end of the night on main street at either park is just magical it's one of my favorite times like mm-hmm. especially when we know we're about to leave and we're kind of taking our time mm-hmm. moseying mm. oh, so good what is your go-to ice cream flavor in the disney parks honestly i don't know what do i i mean I, probably cookie dough yeah. that's just my go-to always i can't really remember yeah maybe mine i is, just don't get the same thing twice mine is always mint chocolate chip yeah a, that is definitely a really good mint chocolate chip ice cream but also i feel like it's just if you're hot it just gives that that extra dose of cool Ooh. plus yeah, it's just, just my favorite ice cream, ice cream. <laughs> yeah <I was> like, <laughs> um mm. violet fleurs said watching the kids explore toontown area with a cold brew in hand yes you I guys love are that. our people okay yeah. yeah we can all go hang out with our cold brew and ice cream <laughs> People we're gonna watch. all right that's it we're renting out disneyland for the day can you imagine <laughs> no no i can't <laughs> i wish oh, i love that jen and 684 said also walking down main street knowing walt himself walked those streets gives me all the feels yep hundy p 100 yep. percent. totally Ooh, bailey Ooh, bailey another agent said people watching and so also she's a southern california native so she's there all the time this, this is her <laughs> so home she said sure. people watching with a mint julep in new orleans square that is happening next time. Love that. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. They're redoing, what is it? Is it Tiana's restaurant coming in there too? Oh my gosh. That's going to be so cool. I'm going to love that. But yeah, that's another thing we do not have in, in the Magic Kingdom is New Orleans Square. And uh, it's definitely, it's, it's probably my favorite land at, I would because it's just it's so unique. There. It is. It's just Especially we, when we're talking about just like standing around in there and like chilling, it'd mm-hmm. be new. Oh yeah. my gosh. All right. Let me see if there are any new ones that came through. 
Um, we're not able to do all of these. I wish we could, you guys. Um, it's just like I said in our last one. I I can't think of a way to do this, but to post like all of these or something like that, so people can just scan through them because there's so many good. Well, ideas. we could we always just... like screen record and kind of slowly go through them if you. But yeah, that's a thought. I have to think of something because there's so many great, great answers that I think people would benefit from if they're planning a trip. But yeah, we just don't have time. I know. It's I not wish. A six hour podcast. Okay, walking along the Seine. Love your name. That's uh, said. That's Erica. That I was like, she always comments. It's Erica. I didn't. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Okay. Hey, Erica. <laughs> um, okay. In Disneyland, Space Mountain, especially when they have overlays, Ghost Galaxy is, she gave it a gold medal. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I want to do all of this so badly. Um, Erica is also one of the agents for people move or travel. That's why we, uh, we know Erica. <laughs> uh, Maria Panero said, riding the Matterhorn specifically during the fireworks. So another ride Same to do. Kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> well, you're jerking <laughs> That's got to be some pretty amazing timing. You got to know when to get in line to time it so that the fireworks are going off. I wonder if that's maybe that's be... part of the magic. If you actually do it, you're like, oh my gosh, I, I can't did believe it. I did it. Yeah, I you did it's it. like more of a you know we happen to do it versus planning to do it. So Tay B Free Born Tay Tay Bree Fairborn. Oof. You want to give that another go? Okay, let me take a, let me run up on it. Tay Bree Fairborn. <laughs> 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 finding all of the Disney characters in a small world. Yeah, so they have like different Disney characters throughout that are sort of subtle. They all they look like the small world dolls, but they're they're part of the, you know, the Disney stuff. Um uh, but uh I will say the last time we wrote it, I was amazed a little bit about how you can really see behind the scenes <laughs> in the small world in California because literally you're just in a trough. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see over the sides and stuff like that <laughs> and it's just a sl- like you could just see like all right we're in a little boat in a trough we're in like Walt disney world like it's at least it meets where the edges meet of the set and so you're not it, like, like but and it's obviously the same thing but i just love that you can just you're like oh riding in a trough <laughs> <laughs> why would you ruin that for me that's I hilarious it. it makes me smile riding in a trough okay tab parker said but also indiana jones mm-hmm. so another fan after Bengali barbecue, of course, I've seen a lot of people mention that barbecue place. So we've not tried that. So yeah. that's got to be like, make we should, we actually need to like write this stuff down. Um, make that a point shots. to try it. <laughs> we love the barbecue at Animal Kingdom at um, Flame Tree Barbecue. Oh, it's my favorite. So if quick it's anything like that, Disney World, yeah. Oh, so good. So good. Awesome. All right. So we, uh, this is the moment where we can just chat for a sec. Um, we are. In Disney World, like we said, probably as we speak, mm-hmm. and we're staying this time at Saratoga Springs, mm-hmm. and honestly, it was really just because there's only one or two other hotels in Disney World we have not stayed at. Old Key West. Old Key West, and wait, that might actually be it. Um, I uh, Coronado. No, you stayed at I've Coronado stayed Springs, and I, you stayed at Caribbean Beach and Coronado. Mm-hmm. Those are two I still have not. But what's the? There's one more. I know. We haven't like stayed in like the treehouse villas. That those are part of Saratoga, but there's a couple others. Yeah. I feel like there's one more that we haven't stayed in. What is it? Oh, uh, the the uh, the yacht club or the beach club. Yeah, and that we are literally for years we've been trying to stay at, but the timing of when we go, it's never available. Yeah, well, so because we, we need booked, to like actually plan ahead. To know? be fair, we booked this trip like a week ago, and we leave in a week. So if we actually there were planned, maybe a few more weeks in there. We, but yeah, basically, if we planned ahead, we could probably get a lot. <laughs> We yeah. could get what we Maybe want. Maybe we should do it. We shouldn't hire a Disney travel agent. <laughs> People move or travel. We know things. <laughs> well, they do. I, don't. I mean, they yeah, do. I was like, yeah, yes, you do. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, so we, it was kind of more on a whim, but we're so excited. I'm excited about Saratoga because it's right by Disney Springs. And the last time we stayed there, our unit we were staying in was like right across the water. So we would just walk a little bit mm-hmm. and then there's the entrance to Disney Springs. So mm-hmm. it was so cool to just stroller on over yep and you see the grab breakfast grab dinner stuff. yeah mm-hmm. i loved that um and that's where we stayed when gigi was pr- i mean less than a year old um so i have like happy yeah. memories with her she was around. about a, about a year yeah. um but yeah her crawling around and that kind of stuff so that'll be fun to kind of redo that and they've been renovated yes, so we stayed been... in the unrenovated and it was we got a one bedroom villa because it was so much cheaper yeah than i mean it was like the same price as a moderate room did we get the like annual a, pass holder discount? Is that what it was? Or we the, did. Uh, actually, I don't. I think their their whatever their saving promo Regular code was yeah. was actually cheaper than our annual pass discount. Yeah. Every once in a while, that happens. Yeah. The, just the 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 percentage is higher. Yeah. Percentage off. But um, yeah, it was actually the same price as just a regular room at a moderate hotel. So we were like, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. It's just nice with kids to have a one bedroom villa. That's mm-hmm. amazing. But you're I just said it so fast. Anyway, <laughs> we're so excited yeah. to stay there again. It's been a while. Yeah. 
So as of right now, our plans are to do California Adventure for our next episode, a similar thing to this. Mm -hmm. And then I think this is subject to change, but we're going to hop back to Walt Disney World because the other number one thing that people requested was Walt Disney World 101. And we could probably do one on Disneyland too, but I'm talking the very basics because we have so many people that watch our podcast or listen to our podcast that are not quote unquote Disney people, or they've only been, you know, it was 10 years ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so just sort of going over the very basics of, okay, in Walt Disney World, that's in Florida, you know, Disneyland is in California. This one has four parks. This one, you know, so like the basics, but to give people an overview for the future episodes, like what we're talking about. Yeah, that's a great idea. And and especially even if you haven't been in a while and you are actually like, okay, I might be planning a trip mm-hmm. just to give you a refresher course on all of that. Um, yeah, we just have a lot of plans for the future. We're so excited. And we really are wanting to do more episodes. The workspace we're moving into, we won't be moving into until august now we just got an email confirmation about that keeps getting moved back there's a whole backstory behind it but anyway that means that we're still setting up here in our house and this is a lot of work to set up tear down each time so that's why we're still kind of at that every other week process we'll see well and another big part of it is is getting stuff organized so then i can have my editor or so you know have somebody else edit the actual podcast because that'll be because that's taking you a lot of time it would literally become a full-time job if we were to do this once a week as the way it's set up right now yeah and you uh, got you know your other full-time job to do my other three full-time jobs yeah yeah (laughs) yeah actually anyway so there we go that's where we're at with that but we thank you guys for the love and We are so, so enjoying this. I hope you guys are still enjoying it too. Again, if you want to leave us a review, especially if it's a positive (laughs) one. I always joke, but you know. (laughs) I'm pretty sure if only like three people listened to this, we'd still do it. Especially like all the way in. Yeah, I was like, we, we, because again, we were doing this on our own. Now we have the equipment. We might as well turn it on and hit record. We're going to have the conversation. I'm going to be drinking the coffee that day anyway. (laughs) Anyway, but uh, thank you guys. I hope you'll come follow us over on our Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I mean, everywhere else, we're at Disneyville Podcast everywhere. Also, depending on the timing, there should be new Walt Disney World vlogs coming out from this trip. So I don't remember when this one's going live. I think this one's going live on Monday. And I think that Wednesday... I'll have uh, the first Walt Disney World vlog coming out. So it's coming. So it's either Ooh. already out or it's about to come out. So we have several new Walt Disney World vlogs coming out soon too. So go see us in Saratoga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. I've already, I do all my like trip prep where I like buy maybe a c- couple new like clothes for the girls and like these little things here and there. We got our sunshine yeah. flyer book to get from the airport to our hotel. Yep. Like we are ready, Freddie. I'm so excited. Learn that driving the SS Saratoga. <laughs> oh gosh. Can I name that movie? I bet somebody will. All right, that's it. I can't even name it. All right, bye guys. Bye.